Hey you guys, ready for another chess short? This one I understand is in the Vienna, so you're on the Vienna channel, what else? And it's submitted by a Tepiskorian Queen, who is a chess boot camp club member on chess.com. Um, and I, I looked up the, the name Tepiskorian, because I thought, it, it's, I'm not sure it's like Armenian, because that would end in I-A-N, but I, w I would imagine. But apparently it means a lover of dance, so. There you go. Um, so without further ado, let's dive into this game. So white is 11.33, black is 10.39, and apparently it's a rip roarer. So let's dive in. E4, E5, knight C3, welcome to Vienna. And knight to C6. So these days I'm playing around with, with this Steinitz gambit thing. Um, but she plays the, I'm assuming she, uh, Jenny by name, so uh, bishop out here, which is a normal response. And we have the semi-copycat, the familiar semi-copycat kind of uh, setup. And now four knights. So actually what we've done is we've now transposed into an Italian four knights. Now I do believe there's a trick here. There's a trick that black can play which is to take the pawn here, then if knight recaptures, you can play d5 with a fork on the knight and the bishop. Um, I wouldn't expect black to know that, and black plays out bishop to b4. This is, this is all right. Thing is, I mean, here you could still play d3, and if takes, you recapture the b-pawn. And this is quite a familiar kind of structure. This is all okay. Uh, got one attacker, one defender. That's oh, the problem with that move actually is oh no, because the, then our, our pawn defends this this pawn because we'd actually create a pin for our own knight here. That's the issue. Kicking the bishop is a thought. I think I would probably short castle here. Oh, d4. Yeah, yeah, d4. You know, it's attacked twice but also defended twice. Not a bad thing. Okay, we have bishop takes, pawn takes. Now that the d pawn's moved, it's only b that can recapture, but I'm quite happy with this situation. Takes, takes, and now look, we have a center, everybody. And black just doesn't. So, what does black do? Ah, oh, black takes, okay. And then queen out, hitting the knight, comes a tempo, knight has to retreat. Right, now we castle, or bishop out there, I think. So we're down a pawn, yeah. Okay, castles. But now black can also castle, there he goes. And yeah, bishop flies out, pinning the knight. Very decent move. Puts a bit of pressure on here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. So black can't really do much about this knight. I mean, black could try kicking the bishop, which I would like to see as white. That would be weakening. We just retreat and maybe think about some way of putting queen and bishop on this diagonal, something like that, don't know. Uh, but black comes in hitting the queen. This is okay, this isn't too bad. Queen's got plenty of uh, places she can go. I think those two probably look good. I'm kind of in, inclined to leave the e-file open for a rook. Um, okay, and we have queen b3. And this is interesting now, because now we've got queen and bishop here. Now this pawn is pinned. This knight is pinned against the queen, right? This pawn is pinned against the king. So the pawn on f7 is in an absolute pin. The knight here is in a relative pin, which means it can move legally, but material will be lost should it do so. The queen is guarding this and this. We're guarding this square from the knight. So the... I think kicking the knight may come soon. Knight retreats anyway. Right now here we probably don't want to push d5 and tickle the knight. There's no point because we're just blocking off this great diagonal that we've got you know, so much control over. Now we want to keep this, right? This is an advantage for white. It's not something that you can take to the bank right now, but it's something that, that is just hanging over black's head. So what would I play here as white? I'm thinking, I'm just, I'm looking at these two. We've got a, a completely open E file. We've got a semi-open uh, B file. 
C3 is also playable. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced with that move. Okay, so where's knight going to go? Can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. Can go here with a fork. And does that help white? There you go, right? We've just prompted the knight to say, please fork my uh, two strong pieces. Queen moves, takes, takes, okay? It's blown up in your face a little bit there, Jenny. Um, and now h6, so I think black has blinked here a little bit. Um, I'd be inclined to drop back, maintain the pin, and dare black to play another pawn move. Good. Oh, good. Okay, this is looking good now. This is looking all right. I'd be quite happy here. I do want to connect these pawns, so at some point you want to think about maybe moving the queen across and c4, just to re reinforce this pawn in the middle. You don't want the queen to be stuck babysitting this pawn. Although it is an important pawn, and another idea could be one of the rooks coming to d1. But again, that's a major piece that's occupied in babysitting role. So obviously, next move, bishop needs to come back. Yep. Now queen onto the open file. So I think this this is by far the most natural looking move. Um, White here plays rook a to e1, which is problematic partly because what's this rook doing now on f f1 right you, you want to move this one here and leave this rook the option of four squares that it can move around right we already said a, a rook here would not be a bad thing also notice that with the queen moving here <clears throat> this pawn now hangs and now the queen comes down and starts harassing pawns okay this is not too bad right now however look our queen is a bit overstretched here. Um, but hanging pawn, I would probably take. And then think about maybe something like maneuvering the knight around to here and the bishop coming here with a fork. But that's a little bit convoluted. Oh, okay, right. So we've undefended this pawn and undefended this pawn, but we're attacking the knight. Okay, I think I think... Grabbing that would be more straightforward. Remember your goldfish. Just highlight anything that's undefended on the board. It doesn't take doesn't take two seconds really to do. That's undefended, right? That's undefended. So when you see anything that's undefended, think, well, how can I maybe capitalize on this? Right? Bishop here looks like a nice idea in general as well. Hits the knight. Um, yeah. Okay, so we move there. Knight moves, because it's now in trouble. And now do we grab the pawn? Yay! Free pawn. Uh, we're probably now going to lose this one. This does give black at least a, a clear pass pawn on the A file. Okay, takes. Now, 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 now. One thing to think about could even be the bishop first mating pattern, right? You need to get rid of the knight, because the knight's covering this. But with a bishop here, you can put the bishop straight in the corner, defended by the queen. Then the queen comes in after the bishop and delivers mate. So this is the queen supported by a bishop that's actually in front of her. Okay, so that's an idea. Um, knight coming in could also be an idea. Where can this knight go? This knight has options right now. But it is on the rim. This would hit the knight, but then knight comes back here and sets the queen back. Okay, now the rook comes flying back again, you see? So we should have moved the other rook in the first place. Oh, but we're hitting the queen. But now, the, now the, again, we're just prompting our opponent to capture this undefended piece. Maybe something like queen down to here would have been absolutely fine. Or, or queen here. So we're going to lose another pawn, we're going to lose another pawn. Okay, we are now down two pawns. Also, notice, dude, our bishop is under attack. Okay, this is not ideal. So I, I play the bishop here now. What the? Okay, right, yeah. Okay, we're now attacking the rook and the rook can't move. So we might force a trade of rooks, but then we lose a bishop. Do we not? Huh. Bishop falls. Now we're down a whole, a whole minor piece and a pawn. Okay. Not too bad. Now, um, so black's got our bish. 
So what we want to do now is we want to think about, okay, what I see on the board, right, we've got a pass pawn, that's an issue. We're down a piece, so we want to minimize the scope of this bishop. So at some point, moves like this, this, you know, if we can keep these pawns in place, that bishop ain't going anywhere. One of these pawns has to move for this bishop to join the game. And if you can prevent that, happy days. Not the easiest thing in the world, however. Um, the other thing is, this king is open, right? These, these pawn pushes were rash and inadvisable. Okay, so white plays rookie one. This prevents black from playing rookie eight. Knight comes back covering the e8 square and also attacking our pawn. Uh, I'd be targeting this. How do we target that? Something like this would make most sense. Yep, good. Black pushes the king, pinning his own knight. Huh. So I'd love to put my knight there with check, you know, because this guy's pinned can't take. And then we just take the knight. But how do we get a knight there? We can't. I mean, this is actually four moves away for this knight. We were like one, two, three, you know, four kind of thing. Um, but this actually would be better. This would be better. Hits the knight a second time. Okay. Yay! That's the first move. Good. Oh, and now we can't move the knight because rook takes rook is mate. We get back at the ranks, not good. Okay, f4. And if takes, that opens up the king further. Takes. Queen takes. Yep. Okay, now we have checking ideas. Right, so what black does. Queen down to this is now two attackers on this pawn. Okay, now we have a check. Now, the thing is, if we can move this knight with check, then we prevent... And also, now, this is not a back rank, mate, because... Uh, was it even before? Yes, it was. Until we move this pawn. Now the king has an escape square. Um, okay, so queen here with check. King moves into the corner. Queen moves back... Now, if we give check, no, no, no. King, if the king moves into the corner, we have bang there with a, a royal fork and king and queen. So if we give check, say here, no, no. Oh, also, dude, the, king, the queen is undefended. So, queen here, no, no, no. We know that's a no. Yes. Because um, it's because uh, of the royal fork. <clears throat> also, this one's a no. Because we can capture, no, we can't capture, we give check with the knight on g6 and a discovery from our queen on his queen, and we win the queen. So there's actually only one move, because it's no, 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 no. So if we give check here, the king has to go to h7. Check. First step completed. No! Black! <coughs> Question is... Now, it has to be said, now, after the king's moved here, rook takes e1 is still checked. Oh, it's not. Not right now, it's not. Okay, please say you found knight g6. Yes! Knight g6. And the king can't, and the king can't go here to defend the queen because it's guarded by both knight and rook. Yay! But also keep an eye out. This is still mate. Right, we still need to be careful. But, fortunately, black doesn't have time to deliver mate because black's in check by our queen, so something's going to have to be done. And whatever happens, just take the damn rook. Take, yes, take it. Knight takes. Check. Now we're going to win the knight. We win the knight. Now we're going to win the bishop. See, this bishop never moved, right? And what a fantastic example of why you have to move one light squared pawn, either B or D, if you're black, all right, to release that bishop. That bishop never got into the game because one, neither of these pawns ever moved. Fascinating stuff. And it's, it's going to be all over. So, okay. So now it's just a mopping up exercise. 
You don't even really need to do that. All you need to do is put the queen here, bang, 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 and it's mate straight away, yeah? Don't even need to take the pawn. Okay, first thing I'll do is just put, slide the queen over, just prevent the king from being able to enter this um, e-file at all. But hey, there we go. Let's make sure we're not stalemating. And, and, a, a, ooh, is that mate? It is, it's absolutely mate. Queen's x-ray defending this pawn. King can't go there or there because covered by the, both these pawns. Nice game. Well, Tepiscorian Queen, thank you for sharing. That was indeed a very enjoyable roller coaster game. Um, hope it's interesting for you guys. But just let, let's go back to the beginning and just review this thing because just notice, right? To get for this bishop to get out into the game, one of these pawns must move. Same with this guy. One of these pawns must move. Yes, yes, yes. You know. Yeah. Let's do them in different colours, right? So for for your bishops. You're, like we've just seen, that's a perfect example. If you never move either the B or the D pawn for the queen's bishop, or the E or the G pawn for the king's bishop, the bishop stays where it is, right? These pawns can <laughs> block that bishop from entering the game for the entire game. Fascinating. Okay, great. Well, thanks for submitting. Um, thanks for sharing. Thank you for watching. See you soon.